What's up, class? And welcome to another episode of the No Mod Shop class here on the School Zone. Got something very interesting for you today. It's interesting to me, at least. Thought you guys might get a kick out of it. In this video, I'm going to give you a tour of my very first completed settlement ever. It's over at Kingsport Lighthouse. So the very first settlement I kind of tinkered with was the Red Rocket, as most starting players do, you know. Then I tried to build something over at Abernathy Farm, and I ran out of settlement space just building a concrete wall around the place and you know adding some floors and stuff so at the time i sort of gave up on settlement building for a while all the while i was still posting trivia walkthroughs and the occasional fallout for extra credit video and stuff fun videos but i hadn't really gotten into building yet then i started watching some youtube videos and learning some of the tricks of the trade so to speak hats off to some of the early masters that i watched you know like jug no respawns adipose props to you guys so that's when I started trying some of the techniques out at Kingsport Lighthouse. I finally reached a finishing point there, but it was still very raw compared to what I thought I might be able to do, so I never showed it off. My very first posted settlement tour was at Finch Farm. You guys have probably seen that video as well as the behind the scenes videos I did for it. If not, links are in the description below, it's very cool. But I was definitely bitten by the building bug at that point and that's when I spent about six months creating my masterpiece, Grey Garden Build, which I call Vault 42 or the Grand Museum of the Commonwealth. And that launched the Nomad Shop class. But sometimes it's fun to go back and see how much you evolved, you know? And when I look back at Kingsport Lighthouse, it's actually not bad at all from my very first completed settlement. Thought you guys might want to check it out. Now I haven't updated anything since I completed it way back in probably like late 2016 or something. The only thing I did was re-add some of the decorations that I had repurposed to other settlements. You know, I learned my lesson that if you leave junk items sitting around settlements for too long and fall it for, they can fall through the floor and you'll lose them forever. So I spent the last couple of weeks going back and just redecorating. Didn't do anything in workshop mode. I wanted to preserve that early look and feel, you know, so you guys can see how much I evolved. So when you watch the tour, just keep that in mind. It's only my first work of art, so to speak, not my latest. Unfortunately, even decorating took way longer than expected because I kept running into crashes and freezes. Definitely one of the biggest flaws of the fallout building system. So incredibly frustrating. In fact, my original intent was to be able to crank out a quick video while I worked on completing my home base build. But I'm even running into crashes there. Like, not even just pauses in the game, the kind of freezing that only rebooting your whole console will solve, you know? Which goes to show that the crashes don't always happen because of settlement size. Although, I do have a lot of light boxes and neon set up there to brighten the place up, so that's probably contributing to it. Maybe a little Wi-Fi glitch issues too, you know, I don't know. But anyway, just know that I'm doing my best for that place. I know a lot of you are anxious to see it, so thanks for your patience. Anyway, before we get to the Lighthouse Tour, let's take a quick peek at this month's Wall of Fame. As you've seen by now, I feature the names of my amazing Patreon supporters each month on this year Wall of Fame. And here's the Student Council this month. Thank you guys so much for your generosity and support for the channel. I'll leave a link in the description below in the iCard above if anyone else wants to become a member of the Student Council. There are some fantastic perks in addition to seeing your name on the Wall of Fame. I've even started adding building tips and follow up for trivia over there for members only. And if you don't want to leave YouTube and take the time to set up a Patreon account, there's also a join button down below where you can become a member or a super thanks button if you want to make a one-time donation. So guys, before we slide on over to Kingsport Lighthouse, I wanted to take a second and give you a quick channel update. So it appears my audio equipment finally conked out. I'm getting a massive hiss that just drowns out my voice and I haven't figured out yet if the settings have changed or my equipment is just getting old and faulty. I've been wanting to buy a new amp, maybe that's what has to happen. Anyway, dealing with that whole fiasco is why this video was delayed. So what I had to do was think on my feet and come up with a temporary solution so it didn't crash my channel now that I'm finally back from my hiatus. I came up with a solution that is really friggin' cool but may take some getting used to. I'm using a program that clones my voice. It's sort of like a deepfake but for myself and on purpose. That's why you may have noticed a slight difference in my live voice so to speak. But who knows, you may not have even noticed at all. Anyway, I wanted to give you that heads up in case you detected that slight uncanny valley. The program is phenomenal, but it's not perfect. And until I can raise the money for new audio equipment, it may have to do. Okay, hop on the school bus and I'll meet you over at my very first completed settlement. All right, guys, here we are. And uh, this is the entrance to my first settlement build. All right, so uh, we have the, the walls surrounding the place let's uh head in through the front gates
All right. Now there's going to be a lot of Brahmin that are going to be getting in the way. So I'm just letting you guys know ahead of time. I have uh, a caravan post that is sitting out there way in front of us. In fact, I can already see that the Brahmin have knocked my little garden gnomes probably through the floor. They were right here. But let's not let that stop us. To the left here, we have my little... Oh, look at that Brahmin. They're going to be climbing all over everything. Anyway, to my left, I have my little marketplace, my little town bazaar mini market. Um, I wanted to have a whole bunch more junk items sitting on top of the counters, but uh, as you can see, it's kind of futile. <laughs> um, and he's supposed to be behind the counter. I guess he got knocked in front of it by the Brahmin. Anyway, I love this little boardwalk feel that I've set up for the place. And what I'll do is I'll do kind of a counterclockwise tour and then take each section by section. And then we'll do a night uh, tour as well. So um, this person, I believe, is my armor vendor. I don't know where they're going. But anyway, uh, what I did was I fit all of the boardwalk pieces that I could into place and anywhere where there wasn't room for an additional piece, I sort of filled in the gaps with mute fruit trees. So uh, it ended up working out pretty well. The reason for the elevation of the boardwalk is Crops determined... pretty good lately. Quiet now. Is determined by the height of the weeds. So I tried to find a height where most of the weeds were not going to be poking through. As you can see, they poked through a little bit there. But I found a good height, and then I built everything else around that height. So that caused there to be a little drop down into the house. Uh, but that's okay. Everything else worked out quite well. So after the mini market here, we have a guard post. And I sort of built this uh, mini market and guard post with gaps, okay? My original intent was to build this sort of storage silo here that was going to contain all of the generators. Ironically, I ended up only needing one generator. I thought I was going to have to like build several and link them all together, but one generator apparently does the trick for the whole settlement. And um, so that ended up being a whole bunch of extra wasted space, but it's all good. So this guard over here is my heavy hitter. He's actually equipped with the broadsider cannon, which he has just enough room to shoot over that low defensive wall. He usually one-shots any raiders that are making their way up the hill. He's also my most heavily armored guard in the settlement, so I consider him like my sergeant at arms. Unfortunately, he can't seem to stand on the wire mesh properly and his feet sink through, which is a shame. But not much I can do about that. Nevertheless, it's a pretty cool little defensive nook here. Sort of like an overwatch perch. And that's the thing about the way I build. If I find gaps in walls or other types of flaws in the construction, I try to incorporate them into the build itself so it looks like it was all part of the plan. It's a good tip to keep up your sleeve. Okay, moving on. We have a ladder that goes up to the second level, but we'll get there a little later. Let's continue along the ground level first. Oops, someone tipped over the shopping cart. Probably the Brahmin. We can fix that real quick. You'll also notice the meeting call bell there. This is where I can have town meetings. All the settlers will gather around the bell and I can head up to the second level and give speeches and town news. In front of me here, we have the trading post caravan I mentioned earlier. All the various vendors make their way over here, but it can be a little annoying when more than one vendor shows up at a time. I kinda like what I did here with the plant sticking out of the pillar post. Sort of looks like a makeshift planter. Kingsport Lighthouse is a very open space that gets attacked a lot. It's probably my number one most attacked settlement. So that's why this thick wall was necessary around the whole property. No raiders have ever gotten inside. They're always picked off down either of the hills behind me before they even make it to the front gate. I'm sure it has something to do with the vendors that crowd this space in front of me. Most settlement attacks seem to be drawn out by caravans. I also added a fire barrel and a water pump so the Brahmin could keep warm and drink from the trough. And for everyone else, there's a grill if they feel like having an outdoor barbecue. Overall, this is basically the settlement center and where people usually gather during meal times and at the end of shifts. You may see that in effect later when they start gathering around the bar at dusk and then everyone sort of spreads out. I also incorporated a fountain into the mix there because it symbolized the town center and also, once again, to hide some floor gaps and weeds sticking through that I couldn't hide. 
This place also looks really cool at night, so be sure to stick around for the night tour which we will probably just roll into without needing to skip ahead. Back here we have another Overwatch position. This guard isn't as heavily armored but she has one of the unique laser rifles in the game. I forget which one but it's like a laser sniper rifle and she can pick off any children of Adam that wander onto the settlement property from that far off lair. Alright, moving on to the town pub area, the saloon or tavern so to speak. We had a nice wooden bar with some stuff on it, some liquor shelves and lights and a ceiling fan and all that jazz. We had all my stools facing the right way and settlers will claim those after work pretty quickly. The pub also serves noodles and snacks and even non-alcoholic beverages. Some beer in the cooler and some Nuka World stack cups and a cash register. Oh and I think you can see some shot glasses and some candy and all that good stuff. It's a really nice little space. Feels very homey to me and cozy. Has a sort of Copacabana vibe or something. All around, I think I did a decent job of setting all this up given how new I was to the settlement building process at the time. As you can see, over here we have a few vending machines. A cigarette machine for example. As you also see, I creatively used the space between the boardwalk slats by filling the area with the machines and potted plants. In a weird way, that's actually one of the biggest tips and tricks you'll get out of this video. Basically, the notion that you can creatively work around any design flaws by making them look like it was done that way on purpose. Okay, moving on around to the billiard hall. We have another covered cabana area with a nice view of the ocean and beach. A jukebox over here with a couch to lounge on and an ashtray for cigars. That lamp is actually going through the wall and half lighting this couch nook and half lighting the public restroom, which I'll show you in a second. Across the way we have a cabinet that keeps all the billiard supplies as well as a snack machine. Yeah, I really like this little area. It's one of three Three of my favorite parts of the settlement. The pool table doesn't get used much. They should have come up with an animation where settlers play pool like they interact with other objects like the bench press or the gymnastics horse. Up the stairs is the restaurant area. We'll check that out in a moment. I think I made creative use of the area under the stairs, but it's not like overly crowded either. Still has that wide open feeling. No space gets left behind in this build. Now one thing to keep in mind is that removed almost all the original trees and fallen limbs from the area except for this biggest tree here in front of us. For that one, I actually built it into the wall of the structure. I wanted to keep it the theme that I was sort of building organically around the nature in the area, as you will also later see with the treehouse above us. Things like that didn't take any special tricks. You can snap things pretty easily into other objects in the game without having to resort to tricks. Next to it is the public restroom. Pretty simple inside, but at least it's clean and welcoming. There's some nice furniture in here, and also so it could double as a changing room for the beach area, which we'll check out later. Okay, moving on. Back around over here we have a campfire lounge area. People can bring their drinks and chill out over here. Maybe even grill some things or cook gumbo in the pot. Now you may notice the spark coming from the fire. Believe it or not, that was actually not done on purpose. That was a mistake caused by the wire glitch process. I made a video about sparks if you want to check that out from the description below or the iCard above. But once I accidentally made the spark permanent, I had to improvise and came up with this outdoor lounge nook centered around the cooking station fire. I think it worked out really well, in my opinion, and reinforces that work with the design flaws theme I was talking about. Now since I did have some space underneath the boardwalk, I creatively used that crawl space to hide all my wires and conduits. That's why you don't see any wires running through the settlement. They're all running under the floors. I set up that switch conduit over there because sometimes things get glitchy and you need like a breaker switch to reset everything. Works like a charm actually. And of course we have the nice view of the beach and the ocean from here. The lighting turned out nicely and it has an open breezy vibe to it. Makes it feel like a beach bar or like a marina cafe. You know something along those lines. Oh and the cliffs also prevent any raiders from climbing in through the open gaps and window areas. We'll go down to the lower boardwalk area in a minute. This is like the upper boardwalk level. But yeah, it really turned out well. You guys might have some doubts that this was really my first completed settlement because it actually looks pretty decent, but it totally was my first. We'll also check out the lighthouse in a minute as well. Over here we have a little bowling alley that I made. I could do much better nowadays, perhaps even automate it. But this was my first settlement in all. It's cool, though, because I have a little score counter and the pins set up just right and a pretty cool backdrop sign with bowling ads on it. Turned out really well. Looks cool at night too. I keep the bowling balls in this bin over here. And there's a picnic table for the other players to sit and chat and have snacks. I really like this whole boardwalk vibe that I built here. Even to this day I love to come back here and chill out and reminisce. 
Fortunately, I didn't like completely overload the place so it started glitching and crashing. I may have been replaying Bioshock Infinite at the time when it came out with that remaster and was inspired. Doesn't compare to my later Grand Museum of the Commonwealth, but it has a lot of charm. As you can see, I continued to fill in the wood plank gaps with more mute fruit trees. So they all like double as both the food source and decoration. Okay, that person sticking out the house is unfortunate, but what you gonna do, right? Overall, I think I hit just the right tone to give it that Fallout Shore vibe. If you get the pun, I had access to the nicer floor tiles at the time, but I think the distressed wooden floor tiles give it more of a beechwood vibe. Okay, so those stairs go up to the defensive battlement as well as the barracks. We'll check that out in a moment. I did some clever things with the defenses on the second level, but first I have to show you Dogmeat's little moat. Walkies, walkies, goodness, this AI voice is so bad. But hey, it's only temporary. I have another dog to keep him company who keeps taking over the doghouse. But at least he has a friend to play with. They've got toys and a water bowl and a tree to pee on that I left in place. That tree is actually part of the whole tree house that connects to the other side. This is probably the biggest tree in the settlement. So I definitely needed to keep this one as well as that previous one. It kind of holds the place up. But yeah, I think the dogs are happy here and they don't get in the way. They sort of feel like you have their own little fort beneath the fort. And the dogs are not trapped in that nook. They're free to roam out which I'll show you in a second. Oops, someone tipped over their water bucket. I can fix that real quick. If you ain't been up to see Grey Garden, you should go. Whole place is run by robots. Funny she should mention Grey Garden. That's where my most epic build is. I'm sure you all have seen that already. But if you haven't, then links are in the description below and the i card above. Anyway, as you can see, the dogs can roam right out over here and even go down to the beach if they want. But it does prevent them from running out to attack raiders and getting in the way of turret fire on the battlement. Okay, should we go inside yet or should I show you the second level first? Let's go ahead and head up to the second level. Up here, you can see I have a second boardwalk that also doubles as the battlement. I had a whole bunch of carnival games up here, but it did start to lag a lot. So dismantled that part and just left it blank. The nice roomy area gives it a pleasant feeling like there is space to stretch your legs. Also, the settlers have lots of room to fire down on raiders and super mutants. Now you can start to see the rest of the upper level and the treehouse that I built into the main house. There is a catwalk that goes across to the dormitory hall in the second story level of the house. Got those lions guarding the front gate too. I actually had started to build flamethrowers that were built into their mouths that were set off by attack alarms. But it got to be a pain in the butt because the settlement was attacked so much and I never got to see them, so I just removed them to save building space for better stuff. Overall, this is a great battlement because it walls off the town and also grants the higher ground advantage in combat. Too bad I can't scrap that big old semi-trailer down there. Anyway, this is the first of many turrets placed around the settlement. This isn't the greatest view, but it's still cool to have a high view compared to other settlements. This is the decontamination arch I used to use all the time when coming back from quests. In fact, this settlement was my home base for the longest time. Anyway, the arch has hooked up the streetlight. This was all before I knew how to do the wireless glitch, of course. Tell you what, let's head over this way to see the rest of the battlement that eventually leads into the upper restaurant area. And another view of the valley below. It's starting to get to sunset, so we'll be able to roll right into the night tour at the perfect pace. As you can see, we have another guard post here. I consider him to be like my captain of the guard. I'm pretty sure he has some kind of unique weapon as well, but I forget which one. So right in front of me, inside that wired globe is a laser turret. It can shoot through the globe and also remain hidden. It can usually take out most enemies coming up the road down there, especially from that Children of Adam lair. But it's mostly raiders I've noticed. The raiders and the gunners. Actually more gunners now that I think about it. But sometimes some super mutant hordes. Not really much else attacks this settlement besides those three kinds of enemies. Oh, I forgot about that second laser turret. It is still hidden behind the wall. Okay, so this is the dining area with tables yet still has that beach club look. The fountain with its candles looks pretty cool at night. Looks very lived in with some food items still on the table and glasses and stuff. But yeah, this upper beach deck is perfect for getting some sun and cool breeze with a nice cocktail in your hand. Maybe some fast food as well. Just bring it up here to eat instead of at the bar counter. This is a little TV area for guests to relax with a drink or a smoke. Maybe it could even be a VIP lounge. More tables and stuff. I think this whole thing turned out really well. This is obviously when I caught the building bug because I knew I could do so much better with some more practice. 
And it's really cool because the settlers actually sit down at the tables with their food or drinks around mealtimes. I think maybe because it's situated so close to the bar vendor stand. More nice views and that maritime boardwalk look. Pretty happy with it all if you can't already tell. Let's move on to the lighthouse now. Just follow me. This is my main crafting room. We have the main workbench at a weapons workbench. There's also my floor vault for keeping unique decorations and a drawer for all my explosives. I try to stay organized with all my storage. You have to keep your unique decorations out of the main workbench because they will get scrapped. But you guys probably already know that. I tried to cover some of the floor junk that comes with the settlement with some mats and rugs. You can only do so much without mods. The rest of the lighthouse is filled with more types of crafting benches. Like this chemistry station here at the landing. I've made many chems and fireworks here over the years. Now Piper used to live here and was my main companion before Kate. When I replaced her with Kate, I gave her own writer's nook here, complete with a typewriter, a newspaper, and a bottle of whiskey. In my head, I imagine her typing away and appreciating the view out of the window down onto the settlement. Maybe she writes newsletters for the settlement. Who knows? Okay, moving on up the stairs here, we have another landing with the armor workbench. Made all my current armor at this particular workbench. And then at the top we have some more beds for settlers. I had to squeeze them all in so everyone has a bed. But I imagine these are the beds for the various lighthouse keepers that take ships. Really nice views from up here. Comment down below if you have ever lived in a lighthouse. I would like to at least air B and B that once in my life. Looks like we came up here at the perfect time as well to catch the sunset. I'm actually surprised that the pillows have stayed on the beds. I think I have only needed to rearrange them once. Maybe these beds don't even get used and it's just to keep up the settlement numbers. One of the most important factors in settlement happiness is that every settler has one bed in a covered and safe location. I forget what the happiness rating is for this build but it's pretty high. Around the corner here we have a scrap machine that a settler works on. I did that so I could have at least one person up here at a time managing the lighthouse. But also to make some junk in the downtime. Let's move on up to the lighthouse itself. Oh yeah, there's that dead body that I can't seem to get rid of. I don't know how many times I've thrown him in the ocean and he keeps coming back. I now consider him like the mascot ghost of the lighthouse. I hate that was a glitch the developers overlooked. Regenerating corpses are the bane of settlement building. Anyway, a few more storage items in here as well as some lamps and other lights to basically light up the lighthouse. It actually glows slightly at night, so it all worked out well. The lighthouse is actually my favorite element of the settlement property. None of the other settlements have a unique landmark like this. Although maybe the train tracks at Oberland or the highway overpasses at Finch and Grey Garden. Okay, let's head back down and check out the lower boardwalk area. Thank you. It's like I can finally think straight. So that guy that looks like Elvis is actually Sheffield in disguise. I made him the master mechanic of the settlement. A lot of the settlers have looted the workbench for weapons. I don't remember giving that one roaming settler that weapon, but it's cool to know they will pick out something they like and randomly patrol the grounds. That's why you want to leave all your unique weapons and armor in a safe place they can't access like I will show you later up in my personal loft. So this area is like the sun lounge area for people to catch some rays. And also a small barbecue grill for hot dogs and hamburgers. Looks really cool at sunset as well. Oh, and up here is the backside guard checkpoint. It has a female lieutenant. I consider her to be my coast guard watch point. And there is just enough room between the desk and the wall for me to squeeze through to the area below without allowing any enemies to enter back through. Overall, this area turned out really well and blended well with the terrain. On the floor, you can see a tiny laser tripwire. I was going to set up an alarm that triggers the power to that laser tripwire and activates some interior defenses. However, I pretty soon realized that no settlers or enemies can make it through this choke point and then enemies usually get taken out before they even make it through the gates. Right now, the front gates are the only way into the settlement from the outside. Everything is walled off or separated by the sea. Okay, we'll take a look at the lower boardwalk glass since it's the prettiest place to check out at night. For now, let's head up to the battlement and then work our way into the house. As you can see, I placed another guard post over watch point. And then behind me we have a cool little turret perch that I built. I built it that way because the turrets now have that perfect line of sight over the hills and rocks down below and can take out raiders that are trying to use the rocks and trees as cover. Also, I placed the turrets over to the side like this because they rarely get shot. Enemies seem to prioritize shooting at settlers over turrets, so these turrets almost never get damaged. 
Just lots of free sustained firepower down on the enemies. Anyway, I used the lamp posts to simulate the support struts and also add a little bit of mood lighting. Then I added some plants for decoration so stay with that tropical vibe. My mom used to be an interior designer, so I asked what the right design lingo might be for what I described about this place to her and she recommended a few terms, seaside chic, coastal cottage, and boardwalk nautical. We know that coastal cottage is the name of a settlement in Fallout 4, but I learned it's also the name of an architectural style as well. Now we come to the start of the treehouse. In keeping with that nautical theme, I added onto the existing house with the sort of treehouse concept. This is the settlement barracks area. I really wanted it to look like hammocks were hanging in a tree house, but obviously we don't have hammocks in the build menu. This was pretty much the next best thing to give it that sleeping on the tree house porch feel. Makes it really feel like a clubhouse, doesn't it? I love this here catwalk. And you probably heard a cat as a matter of fact. My kitty cat is up in my loft where she likes to hang out. Anyway, now that it's night and you can actually see the sign, I wanted to show you that I actually nicknamed the settlement Margaritaville. As you can see, the place really starts to shine at night. I wanted it to have that Robinson Crusoe theme, which actually inspired its own literary genre called Robinson Aid. See, even with this AI voice, I can still give cool factoids. Anyway, the Robinson Aid genre includes such later works as the Swiss Family Robinson and Treasure Island. Okay, moving on back into the house area. To the right we have a little arcade area with a red menace game and some gaming chairs. Tried to make the best of the broken roof, as you can see. Filled it in with some lit bushes and vault figurines. I think it turned out fairly well given that I wasn't a master of the pillar or rug glitch yet. Makes it really feel like a clubhouse, doesn't it? But yeah, I'd want to hang out here with a beer. On into the house we have the community living room. There's some couches, a TV, and a table for board games. Some mounted sea creatures on the wall in keeping with the whole nautical theme. I like how the settlement left almost all of this upper room intact. Even most of the windows over there. It allowed me to really deck this room out in style. The bathroom is simple but cozy. Gave it a sink and a shaved style mirror. Also a bathtub, toilet, and some shelves for cleaning supplies and stuff. So that's pretty much all of the second level. We'll go up to my overseer's loft in a minute. But first let's go ahead and head downstairs into the main part of the house. First, as you can see, this is where all the baking and cooking for the settlement takes place. I actually like to cook in real life, so I had to put a little effort into the kitchen. But anyway, the signs continue to give it that beach boardwalk theme. Oh wait, first, check it out. All the settlers are hanging out at the pub after work. Pretty cool, right? There's supposed to be a bartender assigned to that station, but they're probably taking a smoke break. Okay, here in the first part of the lower level we have a sitting room for sipping tea and spilling the tea. Then we have a dining table. Oh hang on, someone threw the brownies on the floor. With slabs, can't take these people anywhere. Although to be fair, it was probably the cows. Oh man, as a matter of fact, they made a big mess of the kitchen. I literally had this all clean and set up just right before I started recording. What a friggin shame. This area here is my home office space. Left the computer on the desk that came with the settlement and added tables and filing cabinets and all that business stuff. You gotta work with the space you're given and I think I did that here pretty well. I figure this is where I come, or maybe the settlement accountant, to do the import-export management and shipping trade manifests. Okay, back to the mess of a kitchen. Most of it is still intact so you can see what it was supposed to be before everything got knocked over. That table right there I turn into the chopping block because there is a natural blood stain on the floor that comes with the settlement. So it normally has the machetes and the large cuts of meat. There are a few of my cats. I have three total in the settlement. Two downstairs and one upstairs. They have their own cat bowls but like to fight over just one. Typical cats, am I right? Anyway, I added a wood stove which doubles as an actual cooking station and pushed the pipes through the wall so it would look like the smoke was all redirected outside. I had a large cooking table over here where apparently my assistant chef was making some salt water taffy. The cats are so cute. I'm definitely a cat person. I think it was genius that Bethesda allowed you to summon pets to your settlement with the DLCs. Now that I think about it, that cooking stove sticking through the wall may have been my very first rug glitch experiment ever. It's been a few years but I think it actually was. Ah, uh, the memories. It's kind of interesting sometimes to go back to some of your earlier projects and see how much your skills have changed. And I don't just mean with Fallout building. Like, take some time to look back at some of your own skills, whether it be your profession or hobbies, and just appreciate how much a little time and practice can make a difference. Anyway, that about does it for the kitchen. Alright then, let's go ahead and take one last look at the house before we head up to the Overseer's Treehouse Loft. 
so that gate is supposed to be closed. Employees only, as you can see. So yeah, it's nicely lit and has a seaside picket fence thing going on. And of course, I had to fill in the area behind the stairs with some more decor. I don't know why I chose a baseball figure, but it ended up looking pretty nice. Maybe he was a famous player that hailed from the town or something. On up into the treehouse, we start off with my trophy room. It was also my first attempt at a museum, so I figure it's also doubles as the maritime museum for the settlement. But yeah, I have some of my favorite unique weapons and armor on the display racks. I had the big Vim bottle which I move around to all my settlements as well as the bobblehead collection. There are all my magazines nicely sitting in racks. So it's also like a mini library. I'll show you the reading room in a moment. Oops, looks like the umbrella stand got knocked over. Maybe in Fallout 5, you'll be able to lock things into place. Anyway, this little area turned out really well. I actually ran out of magazines for the rack over there. I was going to manually add some of the recipe books, but I didn't get around to it. We're about to go into the reading foyer, but first let me close this door. Placing this door properly without the pillar glitch was hell, but I'm glad it worked out. I just remember it taking a long time to get it right. So now we'll move into my private quarters section of the settlement. Okay, so this area is the crosswalk to the other side of the treehouse. But I turned it into a little reading room so the broken roof wasn't so obvious. If you can see it on the floor there, I have a trap door. Not only is that a convenient way for me to drop down to the lower level in a pinch, but it also keeps settlers out of my private area. In game development lingo, it breaks the path for NPCs so they will avoid it in most cases. I've never had an NPC in my bedroom area except for Kate. Anyway, did my best to decorate this area so it looked lived in. I wanted to put a lot of books on the bookshelf but I didn't get around to it. As you can see, the trap door is like a fire pole shoot for me. It's especially handy when the settlement gets attacked and I need to run to the battlement for that extra firearm support. That little slot there in the chair is so funny. Okay, let's head back and finish the penthouse suite. I love the way the trees create a sort of curtain effect with the lights. And this is my treehouse penthouse. Super cool. Lots of mood lighting and cozy decor. Add a little chess table over here. Here's my living room TV spot right here. I had a lot more decor on those shelves, but it fell through so often that I just left it mostly bare. There's my kitty cat. I named her Nina. What a cuddle cat. My bed is raised a little off the ground just to make sure that any settlers don't spawn in my bed besides Kate or Nina. There are also some suitcases under the bed that hold more of my unique weapons and armor. Settlers seem to be able to take things out of trunks like the one on the end of my bed. But they seem to have a little more trouble with suitcases, especially when they're tucked under the bed. Anyway, as you can see, I couldn't get a floor tile all the way up to the wall, so I had to improvise. The carpet and a rug covered the gap and allowed me to get a bed right up to the wall. And then I was able to place a nightstand with a lamp. So far it has worked like a charm. I really wish they would have given us better beds. Actually, the nicer beds did come with the vault tech assets, but I hadn't finished all the mini quests when I completed this settlement. I didn't want to change anything other than the decorations in order to preserve that original look and feel for you guys to see my early skills. I like this little decorative side table here. The lantern lights up the painting nicely and the garden gnome falling through it almost looks like it was intentional. Makes it look like a small statue bust. You can barely see it, but there's also a hidden safe under the table where I keep more unique junk items used to decorate settlements. Over here we have the dining room table. It's where I could drink my morning coffee or tea and have a nice view of the landscape from the open air windows. Overall, a really nice tropical theme. Alright, let's head down to the final lowered boardwalk section and take the shortcut. Oh yeah, now you can see the lit ceiling fan. It looks very nice at night. You can also see what the rest of the settlement starts to look like at night time. And my settlers just love that bar pub area. They spend almost all night there drinking and socializing. Oh yeah, I forgot about that little basket for picking the mute fruit trees. Pretty cool. Okay, let's head down the stairs to the lower boardwalk. First, here's what it looks like from up above. I definitely tried to give it that seaside pier look. Another thing I really like about Kingsport Lighthouse are these rock cliffs. Really accentuates that sea cliff pier look. And the fact that it comes with its own pier is very cool. And the way that part of the area is buried in the sand. It rocks quite hard. No pun intended. I also made use of the extra pillar support from the bowling area to hang a light bulb. Always gotta make use of the environment. 
I also like that we got some nautical items from Far Harbor, like the decorative buoys and stuff. As you can see, I had another accidental spark happen, so I used it as a place for my beach spotlight. You know, make it look like it's on the fritz sometimes, which it actually does turn off. So I made an easy switch on the side to reset it. Back behind all the crates is the generator for the lower area. The fusion generator came later. That's why I didn't put it in that original generator room. Anyway, the electrical sign as you can see and cordon it off with a little picket fence. Here, let's go ahead and reset the searchlight. Now we have a better version of a lighthouse beacon. I made a video on how to get rid of the spark. Links in the description below and the iCard above. However, if you leave the settlement and come back, they become permanent. So I can't fix it anymore. Down around here is the fishing pier with a fish rack and buckets for their bait. This is also where I figured the settlement dumpster should go since this area probably already smells like fish heads. You can also see some lobster traps and baskets of fish. But yeah, this area turned out quite nice. There was a gap in the boardwalk that was really hard to cover up because I didn't have curved pieces. So I just went ahead and fenced it off and now that is the place I used to dump the corpses. Anyway, it looks so cool at night. So let's head under the pier and you can see another turret. It's never activated but it's there just as a precaution in case any gunners decide to get froggy. Get it? Never mind. Laughing out loud. I like how the piers cross over each other. Anyway, this is the little private beach area. As you can see there are some lawn chairs and a towel rack back there. So this is interesting. I actually put metal posts in the water to mark where settlers could swim without getting irradiated. They can actually wade almost down to their waists without getting any rads, which is rad. As you can see, I'm wading in the water right now with no problems. But if the settlers do decide to take a deeper dip, I always have that decontamination arch on the battlement. Now that I think about it, it probably would have been better down here as like one of those public beach showers. Maybe next time. I wish they gave us a way to build some water assets. Like create bubbles or waves or waterfalls. You know, things like that. Hopefully that kind of stuff does make an appearance in future Bethesda games. But yeah, this area turned out nicely. And if you get the Pier 39 reference, leave a comment below and I'll give your comment a heart. Let's head up now to the middle boardwalk section. As you can see, I built it over the lower boardwalk and also connected it with the boat. Gave it lots of lamp posts for that extra nighttime nautical feel. I should have shown you guys a daytime clip of this area because the views are stunning. Sorry about that. But I like the little reefs in the background and the way the water and lamps make it look sort of like a scene from an HP Lovecraft novel or something. As you can see, I usually put the area under the stairs to good use with plants and lights and stuff. But yeah, the seawall prevents any western beach front assaults. It also gives a nicer view of the private shoreline and the boathouse which we'll check out last. Alright, let's head down to the boat. As you can see, I put a Brahmin trough on top of the boat for kicks. I didn't think it would actually work and make them spawn up there. But it did and it's quite hilarious. I'll let in some clips of them during the daytime. Okay, this is the daytime clip I did manage to get of the Brahmin on the roof of the boat. I took out the trough so the Brahmin would face forward and give us some hilarious looks. They did a decent job at animating these mutant cows. Pretty funny. Oh hey there little buddy. Aren't you the cutest little freaky thing? And now we have a quick clip of the Brahmin resting on the rails. I mean what? Does it think it's a cat or something? What the heck man? That is just way too funny. Oh, hi there, Kate. Okay, let's get back to the night tour. Anyway, there is also a windmill generator, but I mainly did that to make the boat look like a sailboat or one of those air fan boats or something. But it worked out well so I didn't have to run any more wires around from the upper board walk. This was all before I had mastered the wire glitch, and of course long before the legendary Wi-Fi glitch. It actually fitted nicely with the trawling cranes and stuff. Looks pretty cool. Okay, let's head around this other tiny boardwalk to get the full experience. As you can see in the water, I have several water purifiers. These desalinate the water and give the settlement all its potable water. Across the footbridge and onto the boat, we have the recruitment radio beacon. I have enough settlers now so I just keep it off. Inside the boat's bridge we have another generator. I think I may have needed that for the water purifiers. But anyway, the safe in the boat is actually safe. 
I can confirm that it does not respawn. So if you want a safe place to hide some junk, you're welcome. Let's move on up. Oh wait, I mentioned that Sheffield usually works on the boat. I have a scavenging station, so it looks like he's doing boat repairs and he has his own sleeping bag to take naps. I actually think this is one settlement of mine that has the most settlers, so I really had to find creative places to put beds after a while. Okay, here we have another viewing dock. Maybe a whale watching dock or something, but it mainly helps settlers cross over to the boathouse barracks. And down these steps we have the boathouse and also a bathroom and tool shed. Once again, try to leave no space behind. Always have to decorate under the stairs with trees and lights and stuff. Here we have the tool shed that also doubles as a bathroom for the boathouse residents. As you can see, tool chests and all that stuff. And also to switch to close the door for some privacy. Well, semi-privacy I should say. Okay, on to the dock house. This was a really cool structure that came with the settlement. I added some of the ocean themed paintings around the building and some lights and life preservers and stuff. Lots of crows and seagulls, by the way. I really like how the lamps are able to clip through the walls. I'm sure they didn't mean for that to happen, but it makes it look like it was meant to be that way. I can't remember if I purposely turned some beds around so they would sleep head to toe like in the Navy, but I guess it worked out like that. They had their foot lockers by each bed as well. The inside of the dock house also has some paintings of sea captains and the light. Very cool low level mood lighting and all that. It's a simple setup, but I think it turned out nicely. And then out here we have a little dockside seating lounge. Maybe they can drink their morning coffee out here and watch the waves before they start their shift. Just all that head cannon stuff. I'm sure you guys do it too. Anyway, that about wraps up the tour. I'll go ahead and walk out with you guys, so to speak. You never forget your first completed build in the GAN. I was quite chuffed. This is definitely the settlement that bit me with the building bug. Anyway, I really appreciate you dealing with this clone voice. I'm definitely saving up for new audio equipment because I think it's actually my amp that is blown. So we may have a couple months of this ad voice until I can order that and get it set up. But hey, at least the videos will still be flowing. My next video will probably be another chapter in the main quest line and then probably back to Far Harbor to continue the luxury hotel build. Okay, thanks for bearing with me guys. Back to my regularly scheduled voice to wrap up the video. Not bad, huh? You understand why I never showed off before though. I had, you know, much better stuff on deck. But now that you've seen my skills at work, taking a little stroll down memory lane to see how my skills evolved was kind of fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for your patience. Also, thanks again to all the members of the student council for your continued support. We're moving back up closer to that next goal, so head on over there and see what you can do. Every little bit adds up. Until next time, happy building and class dismissed.